Hello everyone, it's David Mood from Studio One Expert. I'd like to show you some of the new features in Studio One 3.1, the first major update for Studio One 3. Now, the main focus for this update was the hardware integration, which PreSonus did for their 192 interface and the upcoming DP88 preamp. And Marcus did a great video on the integration with 192. You can watch it on our channel. But Prisoner still managed to add many new features, uh, which has nothing to do with the hardware integration. The biggest one, I would say, is the plugin manager. And there is an article by Paul on our website, on Studio One Expert, which you can read. And I will now concentrate on some of the other new features, which uh, Prisoner added as well. Now, the first thing I'd like to show you is uh, concerning the splitter. And this is a case where prisoners really listen to the user base, listen to feature requests. If you don't know what the splitter is or haven't worked with it before, I did a video when Studio One 3 came out about the splitter, quite in-depth, where you can watch everything and learn everything there is to know about the splitter. I will put a link in the description of this video, so if you haven't seen it, you can watch it and then come back. Now, one thing which was missing, and I mentioned this in my video, was a way to easily control the volume of the individual audio parts in the splitter. And uh, Prisoners has now added a volume fader to this part. So let me show you how this looks like. So I've got five drum tracks here, which are going to a drum bus. And there is a compressor sitting on it, which is not activated yet. And I would like to do some parallel compression on these drums. So let's start the playback. Activate our plugin. Squashing it quite heavily, but now we will just use uh, parallel processing for these drums. So let's open our routing page and insert the splitter. Let's put this on the right side. And now uh, both parts, the clean unaffected part and uh, the compressed part is playing back at the same volume. So before the 3.1 update, you had to insert a mix tool under the compressor if you wanted to control the balance of the two paths or use the output noob of the plugin if it has one. So, but in this case, you can see here, we have this new fader. If we click on it, then it expands the bigger fader and we can here adjust the volume. We can turn it down completely and then we can, we just hear the uncompressed signal. And now we can uh, turn this up as much as we like to have it and balance it out. As with the regular faders in the console, if you hold on shift, then you can adjust the level in finer increments. And you can also just click here and type in a value, let's say minus six. Yeah, this is very, very handy. And of course, if you now we here have only two splits, but uh, let's say if you use the frequency split option and we have like four splits, then as you can see, for every audio path, we have a nice volume fader. This is very, very nice. And thank you, prisoners, for listening to your user base. But, you know, as unthankful we are as users, if you add us something little, we immediately want more. So please, prisoners, this is such a nice and elegant solution. Please implement this also for the sense, because I feel this solution here with the sense, in my opinion, this is still one of the biggest weak points in Studio One, which has now become such a great DAW. And this is one of the really few things which, in my, in my opinion, still doesn't feel like a grown-up thing. So you could just put the same which you have here, the same kind of solution, put it here to the sense and maybe make the fader even a little bit bigger, the one which appears, and I would be completely satisfied with that. So once now that you invented this solution, I think, or I hope that it's not too difficult to integrate it also here. You could even leave this slider for the people who are used to it and just put it next to it. Uh, I hope very much you will see this in the next update. Thank you in advance. Okay, let's move on to some other new features. In the Arrange view, under the Range icon, where we have the options for the Arrange view, we have two new visibility options. The first one is Colorized Track Controls. Now, they basically they implemented the possibility to color the, the channels in the console, and now they uh, took the same approach and applied it to the range view, as you can see. These are the track controls, and if you engage this option, then they have the same 
color as they have in the console. Which of course makes perfect sense and some users requested this too. So thank you Prisonos, nice touch. I'm not sure if I personally use it, maybe it's a bit too much of a good thing, but uh, it makes yeah, perfect sense to integrate it. And the other option is uh, show channel numbers in tracks. Now this m might sound a little confusing maybe. So what is this? It's about these numbers which you can see here in the range view of the tracks. And uh, in the console you can see the numbers here on the channels. And it's important to remember that in the terminology for uh, Studio One, tracks are the tracks which are sitting in the arrange view and the channels are the ones in the console. They are not the same thing. Yes, in audio tracks have always one audio track has a corresponding audio channel in the console, but this is not the case with virtual instruments. So uh, this is why we have this difference between tracks and channels. So if you click show channel number in tracks, it's maybe confusing first because in this case you see it changed absolutely nothing. But to understand what it does, I will now add a bus in the mixer. So let's add a bass to this snare track, for example. And now, if you watch now here, uh, the kick track is number one, snare is two, hi-hat is three. But if you look here in the console, kick is one, snare is two, then our bass is three and the hi-hat is four. So in this case, the number of the hi-hat is three in the range view, but in the mixer it is number four. So now if we engage this option, uh, show channel numbers in tracks, then uh, the numbers change in the range view. So you can see now we have one, two, four, because we have now between the snare and the hi-hat, the bass, and the, a bass is not represented in the range view, so that's why now this is number three, and it's missing here. So it just it just helps to get a better overview that uh, you have the same number in the range view than in the, as in the mixer. So it's certainly not the most spectacular new feature, but I think it's still a nice addition which can really help you to, to keep your song tidy and get a good overview. Okay, what else do we got? Prisona says that um, there is improved mouse over visibility of the monitor buttons in the console. What the heck does that mean? Now it's very easy if you mouse over these controls here. If you remember, in the older versions, they lit up when you went with the mouse through it. So the mute lit up a little bit red and so on. And uh, now all buttons, yeah, they're just a little bit of change, this line below it changes, but they don't light up anymore. To be honest, I'm not sure how this is an improvement. Uh, in my eyes, it made it worse, but uh, whatever. I just wanted to tell you that it's there. Okay, let's move on to something else. Um, one of the changes is that Prisonus has improved the auto gain in the compressor and in the uh, FET channel strip. So let's check out if this is true. I'm doing this myself for the first time. Let's remove this uh, compressor here, and which brings us to another new, now maybe not feature, but a little change. So if you remember, if you removed here the last plugin, then the channel editor opened, if you wanted it or not, which was quite annoying. And if you do it now, it doesn't open. So this window opened automatically when you remove the plugin in Studio One 3, and now that's not the case anymore. Very nice, thank you. Okay, let's add the compressor. Now we can just type in the search here to get it quickly. And here is the auto gain feature which Pristona says has been improved. And I never used this because it was really, the implementation was really bad and it made it made the signal just much, much louder than it should have done it. So let's check out uh, if it has changed. Let's dial in a healthy dose of compression. Let's lower the threshold a bit. So we really get like a bit more gain reduction. Okay, that's about it. And now let's check what the auto gain does. Let's check the meters before and after, if you bypass. That's about right. Bypassed. Active. Perfect. I tried this myself for the first time now and I can definitely say it got much, much, much better because in the past 
With these settings, if I had engaged out again, then it would become insanely loud and would even clip the channel. So, well done, Prisonos. Okay, there is one last uh, minor new feature I'd like to show you. If we insert the virtual instrument here, let's open, let's close this and open the inspector and add a note fix. Now we have the possibility to gain, have access directly to this note fix here in the track controls with this little icon. That's also a nice new addition. So even though Prisono said that the main focus was on hardware integration for this update, they still managed to add a lot of cool and useful new features for a point one update. So thank you very much, Prisonos. And thank you for watching. I hope you learned something new. I've been David. Bye-bye.